Much love, family. How's everyone doing? Friday the 13th, the luckiest day. For me anyway. Friday the 13th, supposed to be unlucky for some. For the... <laughs> For those that believe the bullshit. Brilliant, brother. How's it going? Hello, hello. LV. Lee. Lee I. Uh, Jet. Mantra Chance. Scott. How's it going? Mother, daughter. How's it going, Mama? Average to great. How's it going, brother? Nice to see you here. Star Seed of Life. Baby Carter Horror. Much love, much love. Alright, we're just uh, getting started, so thank you very much for joining right on time. We will just give it a few moments for people to join us because it is a, a planned live today. Or well, planned on the day because my inspiration comes on the day. I'll be meditating or I'll be going for a walk and the divine will be, can talk about Akashic Records today. So that's what's happening. What I'm going to say, I don't know. <laughs> that's what the Akashic Records do. That's not my job. To know what to say is not my fucking job. <laughs> my job is to turn up and allow. And then whatever needs to happen just happens. That is the power of the Akashic Records. So let's demystify the Akashic Records firstly because let's face it, there's a lot of misinformation out there, right? So how do you find what's true and what's not true amongst information? Because everything is information, everything is Maya. So everything is illusion anyway. So amongst the illusion, how do you find the truth? It's what we share on this page. Exactly how to do that. All right, just waiting for more people to join us. WTR, Salona Singh, thank you very much for joining us. AKA Chris Sis, thank you very much for joining us. Wave, 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 into the rabbit hole we go. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, I get mine from Amazon. These are really good. They're a brand that I normally stick with because they're really good. Sophie, thank you for joining in. All right, we're getting more and more people here, so we will be getting started shortly. I am listening to Muldahara by Shiva Ray. Shiva, R-E-A, and Alex Theory. that I use I get them from Amazon can't go wrong with these and they last for fucking ages look at the size of them you get six in a box well get six in a box get them from Amazon very cheap one will last you a, a month or more I mean they last ages And I burn a lot of sage. I mean, not over the top. <laughs> I 
but when I'm meditating, it's the scent, the smell is very nice. All right, so we got, yeah, sure. Into the rabbit hole we go. Just send me a DM, I will send you the link, darling. No problem at all. Lotus Lane, thank you very much for joining us. So we're going to be talking about demystifying the Akashic Records today. Just give it a few moments for us to settle in. I'll give you a bit of an idea of what I'm going to cover. So I'm going to talk about what the Akashic Records are not. What I believe they are. I, I, I can, <laughs> anyone can only ever talk from their beliefs. Okay, so always keep an open mind, but question everything. So it's a way to be open-minded, but question everything. You can be both. Don't get in your own way, please. Open-minded means do not question it whilst you're listening. <laughs> question it afterwards. Like when you're reading a book, like read the book and then fucking make make your make your judgments. <laughs> right? So when you're on a live to help yourself to get the most out of it, just take it in. Do not start a debate whilst a live is going on. And just take the information in. We are information receivers. You can just receive information, you do not have to agree with it. Savannah Sky Bias, Frequency Bliss. Thank you very much for joining in, much love. All right, I'm just gonna give it a few, couple of more minutes. And I'm just gonna listen to a bit of Shiva meditation before I start talking. records so what are Akashic records firstly so well whatever you know right now let's forget about that for now so I always say when you're when you're in a place to learn put aside what you know like Bruce Lee used to say empty your mind right or a lot of um, ancient Wisdom has taught us empty your cup because if your cup is full If this is already full you Can't put anything in it 
it's just gonna overflow. If you already think you already know it, nothing's gonna go in. So just empty your mind. Forget what you know for a moment. It will actually help you access the Akashic Records, which we're gonna talk about. So, judgment, judgment is something that we do when we perceive information. We perceive objects, information, anything within the illusion is perceptional. Everything. Time is perceptional. That's why time can be slowed down. I do a lot of videos on how to slow down time, right? Why it often feels like I do a lot and I manage to do a lot is because I slow down time. Perception of time. <laughs> Obviously there's 24 hours a day, but the perception of time is slowed down. So my 24 hours seems like in comparison to when I was in lower states of consciousness, my 24 hours in, in comparison seems like it lasts about a week. So what I could do in a week, I can do in 24 hours. Because it's the illusion that keeps you in the limits. So you have been conditioned since you were children to believe that you need to learn from external sources. That's why you're here today. I'm here to tell you you don't. Most of what I know doesn't come from external sources. A lot of people ask me, where, where, how do you know what you know? Like I did a live the other day on mantras. Well, there is external information, but inf external information is signposts. It's just like you have a dream and you forget what happened in the dream. When you're here now in this lifetime, you're just remembering who the fuck you are and what you already knew. Right, so when you're caught up with the illusion and still stuck in that condition mindset, I need to learn from external sources. So people are like, I need more information. It's wrong. It's wrong. You don't need more information. You need less information and understand less information better. Less is more. So I don't, I don't take in a lot of information. So I read a lot of books, but I do not read all the books. I have a lot of books, but I do not read a lot. I have a lot of books, but I do not read a lot. So where does the wisdom come from? It's not coming from the books. The wisdom doesn't come from the books. We have a really poorly conditioned humanity out there right now, which believes, and they're still happening right now, my children are becoming the same, and I'm trying to break it as much as possible, but it's very difficult when you're in a schooling system. Because school, what it does, it teaches you what to think. It doesn't teach you how to think. It doesn't, re doesn't teach you to remember who the fuck you are. So if anything, it takes you away from truth. It takes you away from what you already was. So as you grow older, a lot of the time, what you're doing is just unlearning shit. Because most of, that's what's happened for me. So this is why I don't take in a lot of new information. Unfortunately, like I know some of you even send me information in my DMs and stuff. I can't watch it. I can't take it in. It's not that I won't ever. It depends on whether it feels right. It's just when you've been through so much information out there, you've got to be very careful with what you keep taking in. Right? So I've done a lot of unlearning and I continue to unlearn so I can remember. So the Akashic Record, now I'll talk about this in a number of different ways. I'll talk about Akashic Record Chakra 9, okay? For me, it's a reference point, because I know where it is. 
and it helped to know where to, where the library is. So uh, that's another thing I want to talk about. People refer to it as a library. Okay, it's not a place where you get books. So what is the Kashuk Records? Well, let's demystify it. It's firstly not a place you get books. You're not going there and reading books. Forget this idea of it being a place, a bookstore, okay? Um, there again, a lot of misinformation out there. People are getting stuff in their mind, like this is what it should be like, Akashic Records. Now, I never really learned anything about Akashic Records. Very little. I heard about it a little bit here and there, saw references to it. So how did I discover the Akashic Records? Well, Enlightenment showed me the Akashic Records, so God showed me the Akashic Records or what I started to label as the Akashic Records because I heard something referenced called the Akashic Records. None of what I learnt out there about the Akashic Records was true. None of it. So, doesn't make it wrong, it just wasn't my truth. Right? Doesn't make it wrong, it just wasn't my truth. So everyone's truth, what is a truth? Well, it's whatever you fucking believe to be true, I suppose. Um, in this world, in that limited form of what a truth or a belief is, what you believe to be true, but then there's an essence of truth, the truth behind all that is. And that is an underlying truth that echoes through eternity. Now, it may be distorted a little bit here and there, the way it's explained. This is why you get different religions explaining the different same thing, but in different ways. This is why one, call the, one calls it divine why guru, one calls it Allah. One calls it Jesus. One calls it whatever, right? It doesn't matter, it's labels, mental constructs. So in this world, we create mental constructs and label things just purely for understanding. Purely for understanding, that's all it is. So do not ever get caught up on the labels. Do not ever get caught up on the labels. Do not matter, you can call it whatever you like. As long as you like believing in God and knowing God or the divine, whatever you want to call it, You'll often hear me say God and divine interchangeably, you know, it's the same thing. So, you know, for me, the source of all information and all wisdom and all intelligence is God, the divine. I'm never gonna be beyond that. That's where everything comes from. That's what I connect to when I say, look, I don't know when I'm gonna do a live, I don't know what it's gonna be about next. I mean, it's only two days ago I did one about mantras. The divine told me, an hour before I did that live, you're gonna talk about mantras. Do I know what I'm gonna talk about when I turn up on the live? It lasted two hours, no. I just know I'm gonna talk about mantras and I'm gonna go live. So where does the information come from? It's the Akashic Records. So let's demystify the Akashic Record. You're using it all the time. It's not something that you need to gain access to. There's no special fucking key. There's nowhere to go to find it. It's your unconscious mind. Your unconscious mind is the doorway to the Akashic Records. Your conscious mind, as I've often said, processes 128 to 300 bits of information per second. Your unconscious mind, 4.3 to 20 million bits of information per second. So it's a lot more powerful. So I've often spoke about the seven chakras, solar plexus, uh, root chakra, solar plexus, sacral chakra, heart chakra, throat chakra, third eye chakra, crown chakra. Everyone knows the seven chakras. Now I discovered 14 chakras during enlightenment. Now I didn't learn about these, I didn't read about these. So where do I discover about 14 chakras? How do I know the information about the 14 chakras if I didn't learn it externally? Well, it came from God and the Akashic Records. Akashic Records is a part of the 14 chakra system that I speak about. Now those are the only ones I've discovered yet because I'm still on the journey, I may discover more. And only this page will be the place to show, share it. 
because that's what it's all about it's a journey so other things like there's a lot of stuff I continue to learn and know that I do not learn from external sources so there's a few things I'm going to talk about today all right firstly we're going to demystify what the cash records are and are not I'm going to talk about the unconscious mind and reference to the unconscious mind as the eighth chakra okay uh, your first connection to God's intelligence if you like ninth chakra is the Akashic records tenth chakra is God consciousness realms eleventh chakra is Nirvana bliss the realm of pure bliss twelve is heaven thirteen the cosmic realms that's where all astrology and the other multiple dimensions and everything come into it fourteenth celestial realms Okay, this is the ultimate light beings, okay, which we are all connected to. None of us are excluded, unfortunately. <laughs> Whether people remember or not in this lifetime is another story. But that's not my job. God's looking after all of that. Um, what else am I going to talk about today? Well, what you know and what you learn there's a massive difference between what you know and what you learn there's a massive difference between knowledge and wisdom you got to remember god the divine is the dot connector it's what connects the dots so in the dysfunctional world there's human beings that have been conditioned to believe they need to learn to know this is the problem human beings have been conditioned since they've been born they need to learn to know some of you may actually believe that, that you need to learn in order to know. You do not. You do not need to learn to know. I know that for fact, because I do not do a lot of external learning. So how the fuck do I know? Where does it where is it coming from? I didn't know. But now it starts to make sense. The other thing I want to talk about is past lives. Connecting with your past lives. Now, whether you believe in rebirth and past lives is another story. You don't need to believe in having past lives to have had them. You've all had them. You just don't remember them. So what I'm going to talk about today is hopefully going to open you up to remembering your past lives as well. Because I'm remembering mine. I've remembered quite a few already. And I've spoke about them. A lot of my Qigong stuff was a past life as a Qigong master. Now I learned a little bit of Qigong, but nowhere near enough for me to be as proficient as I am with Qigong. Nowhere, I did not learn enough Qigong externally to for it to be possible for me to know what I know about Qigong and the way that I practice it same with breath work so past lives you can gain the knowledge and the wisdom of your past lives and bring it back into this life so what you learned in your past lives because in a lot of past lives, you got really high in your level of consciousness. You just do not remember. You was very, very high in past lives. Many of you. The fact that you're on this life, in this fucking lifetime, is proof that in a past life, you was at a very high level of consciousness. You just didn't complete the journey. 
Because if you completed the journey, you wouldn't be here again like me. Because once you complete the journey, you don't come back. That's the end of suffering in the illusion. So to, to gain true freedom from the matrix, there's only one way, true enlightenment. Pure detachment from the illusion, Maya. You've got to understand it was never real. So you keep coming back into this world, into these experiences, in different lives, to remember, finally, and wake up to the fact, whilst you're here, it's not real, so you can play with it better. So when you play with it better, miracles start to happen. That's the divine change in the music, not me. <laughs> I like the beat, thank you God. we got today okay let's move on with it okay so the akashic records what they are not is somewhere you need to go you don't need to travel there you can access it instantly all the fucking time so, you know, I use it all the time. I speak from it. Inspiration, wisdom comes from it. Where does creativity come from? How do you create stuff that's never been created before? It's never been created before because you didn't learn it. So creativity is an act of connecting to your Akashic records. So practicing creativity, this is why I love to create stuff. I like to create content. Because creating content is, is a passion of mine because it's creativity. Creating the post, I create every post of mine. I create the text, I create the graphics, because it's creativity. In this life, you're either a destructive mindset or you're a creative mindset. It goes one way or the other. You either destroy or you create. So you either destroy yourself and you have destructive thoughts, which work against you, which keeps destroying you, or you have creative thoughts, which create you and you keep creating more. It's the only way it goes. Don't overcomplicate it. As I say, I just take the bullshit out of all of this, right? Akasha records, nowhere to go. It's not some mystical fucking thing, okay? You've got seven chakras in the body, eighth chakra here, unconscious mind. Connect to that first connection to God and God's intelligence, divine intelligence. Ninth chakra is above that. Okay, now that's how I see it. You don't have to see it in the same way. These are just my reference point. As I said, labels and mental constructs. But I've got to understand it, right? So that I can explain it. How can I explain something that is typically unexplainable otherwise? Um, I've got to somehow make it make sense. So please do not get hooked up on the labels. So ninth chakra. It's here, okay? I just know it's here and I'm going here somewhere. I'm not going in here to get the information because this is full of shit most of the time. I'm going out here. I'm not going in the body, I'm going out of body. Out of body experience. Connecting with spirit. Because that's true. That's pure. You've transcended the mind and body then. Your soul, your spirit. So when your soul, your spirit, and you're connecting with consciousness there, you're not coming from a limited consciousness perspective. You go out the fucking way. Now consciousness can flow. Akashic Records is just a flow of information. It just trickles down. You know, I spoke about the Shushumna channel being here in the body, the seven chakras. It continues above your head and it keeps going up, right? And then it's like an elevator. It visualizes like an elevator, just keeps going into, oh, into higher dimensions. 
Okay, and I spoke about the 14 dimensions, 14 chakras that I've just spoke about earlier today. So as you keep in mind this elevator metaphor, you go one step at a time. So first step is getting out of the body into unconscious mind, unconscious intelligence, eighth chakra, connect to divine intelligence. Divine intelligence showed me the Akashic records. The Akashic records is a place out of body, out of mind, out of at least this mind. You know, there's there's an internal mind, which everything is a part of, do not forget. So there's there's this mind, the brain mind, the limited mind, and then there's the eternal mind of God, okay, which you are still going to be a part of. There has to be that for everything else and all the experiences out of the body to exist and for all experiences in other dimensions to exist. So there has to be a mind. There has to be intelligence. So when your body and mind is no longer there, your limited mind, you're left with God's mind, not your mind, God's mind. God's mind is pure. So is your real mind. Your mind is purer. My mind is becoming more and more purer as I continue to do the work. And it gives me easier instant access to the Akashic Records. It's as simple as that. So the more I keep getting out of the way, the easier it is, is to know. So I do not need to read the books to know. You know, just... Um, I just done a poster reel about the whole point that exactly what I've just said there and someone's comment was I've got a great book you should read on this I mean that was the whole fucking point you don't need a book to learn about this <laughs> um, so someone clearly missed the point like you don't need it you really need less information external information get little bits of the information and make sense of it properly. Like when I learned neuro-linguistic programming and I became a master NLP practitioner, I focused on the most important concepts and I mastered those. It's the easiest way. So anything I learn, Wing Chun Kung Fu, what's the most important concepts? I've, I've took a lot in, what's the most important concepts out of everything I've taken in? Now let me focus on, in on that. The Akashic Records is the source of mastery Right? There's knowing and then there's mastering. Two completely different things. Knowing a little bit of shit about a lots of information is fucking useless. It's fucking useless. Knowing lots of information about lots of fucking different things and never doing anything with it. It's fucking useless. It's pointless. But here people are, <laughs> feed me more, give me more information, I need to know more. You do not need to fucking know more, you need to fucking understand. It's a big difference. It's a massive difference. Like why, why read 10 fucking books on Taoism when you do not even understand yin yang. Why read the whole of the Guru Granth Sahib when you don't even understand the first text, the Mool Mantra? Why read and try to understand the whole Bible when you haven't even read the first fucking page and understood the first fucking page properly? Because most of the time, most of the books you read, even the ancient texts, even the Guru Granth Sahib, even the Bible, even the Quran, even the Bhagavad Gita, the most important stuff is in the first few pages. And it was done on purpose because God is smarter than everyone else. And God is the one that put all that fucking information there. And he knew the smart motherfuckers are going to read the first few pages and get it straight away. The dumb motherfuckers are going to keep looking for the details.
Hope you're getting it. Right? So, don't focus on the detail. Focus on knowing less and understanding more. So what you know is not what you learn. You already knew the day you was born everything you needed to know about this lifetime that you was about to live. Not only that, you came in with the knowledge and wisdom of the past fucking lives that you've already lived. But what they did is put you in school and didn't teach you how to access the Akashic records. They taught you how to read other fucking books. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. <laughs> right? All the nursery rhymes and all the stories. And then you're just learning stories all the time. Then you're hooked from stories. I want to learn more stories. I want to hear more stories. Mum, read me a story. That's how they get you. Right from the day you're fucking born. All you ever want to do is hear stories. All you want to ever do is learn more. Because what does school teach you? You need to learn to know. If you want to learn about this, you want to know this, you better learn it. So that's what everyone believes. I know for fact, you do not need to learn externally to know. I am a proven living fact of that. Because I do not learn a lot. Okay, I'm not saying you do not learn from external. So as I said, external information is signposts. It's been put out there as information within the illusion. Because within the illusion, the truth is laced within the tapestry of the illusion. So within Maya, the illusion here, 3D physical realm, it's all Maya, illusion. This, me, I am Maya, I'm not real. I'm real here in the illusion. You gotta get that. That's why I put the post up yesterday and someone like, what do you mean by that like in, in the matrix, right? In the matrix. The kid goes, look, the, the post is is on my Instagram page, right? Everyone knows this, this thing from the, um, from the Matrix, right? Do not try and bend the spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth. What truth, says Neo? There is no spoon. How many people are caught up with all the rest of the fucking bullshit? In the film and didn't even get the most important concept. That was the most important one. There's a lot of important concepts. But if you don't get that one. You're not going to get the rest. Like this is why. I'm always bringing up Maya illusion. Like if you can't get that bit. You're not going to get the rest. So you got to get the basics man. You got to master the basics. So the basics are breath. The basics are music, love, nature. The basics are conscious and unconscious mind. I mean, how many human beings do not even know that their unconscious mind processes 4.3 to 20 million bits of information per second and they're trying to use their conscious intellect, which is processing 128 to 300 bits of information per second to find the fucking truth. It's never going to fucking happen, is it? So this is why we've got to step up and just be the ones. Like as we discover it one by one, we share it. You know, there's no harm in sharing. There's no fun in wakening by yourself. Well, there is. <laughs> it's a lot more fun if others do, uh, do come along with you. <laughs> so what you know and what you learn, very different things. Knowledge and wisdom, two completely different things, okay? 
The dot connector is the divine, okay? We do not need to connect the dots with the intellect. Forget about this idea of trying to piece it all together, trying to put the jigsaw puzzle together. I used to try to do this. I spent 44 years of my life, or 43, because last year I stopped doing that when I went into enlightenment. But all of that time before, seeking, meditating, doing this, pranayam, yoga, meditation, listen to this guru, listen to that guru. And don't get me wrong, gurus are important. Gurus are very important. I've got I had a lot of very important gurus in my life. You know? Um, some of the ones that I've often spoke about, very influential for me. Obviously, the, the ten gurus and Guru Granth Sahib, um, you know, massively. Um, Shiva consciousness, Christ consciousness, Buddha consciousness. These are my gurus, Buddha. Um, also, Um, Stuart Wilde there's many more Ramana Maharishi Krishnamurti Sadhguru more recently is pretty good not sure about the agendas and stuff but hey ho information is good you know what we shouldn't do is judge people that are providing the information don't shoot the messenger man like just Sometimes there's, you know, people say, oh, these are celebrities, they're all part of this and that. But, you know, some some people say good stuff. Just listen. It doesn't matter who's saying it. it. doesn't matter who said it. Just listen to what they're saying. The message is the most important fucking thing. Like, people look at me and they say, spiky hair, got a chain on. He ain't going to know anything about high consciousness. I need to listen to Sadhguru. He's got a turban on. He must know because he's got a turban. That's how stupid people are. You know? Like, they expect a guru. Like, even now, you look on Instagram, there's some people that are dressing up like the gurus to make themselves into gurus. I don't play that bullshit. I'm not going to put a fucking turban on and pretend I'm something I'm not. It's all bullshit. Why are you fucking with the illusion? It's all illusion. When I first started doing my videos on this page, I had tattoos on my face and everything because I was saying, this is all illusion. I don't give a fuck what I look like and how people see me because the right people are going to listen to me and the wrong people are going to look at me. You hear that? The right people are going to listen to me and the wrong people are going to look at me and judge me. And that's what's going to happen to all of you, my friends. Especially when you awaken, when you start speaking your truth. But I don't give a fuck. It's my truth is my truth. Your truth is your truth. And you should not give a fuck. Because I can guarantee you something. People will take you away from your truth. And you can't allow for that to happen. Because mostly, it's not going to be in alignment with other people's truths. Like most of the stuff I speak about on my page, you will never hear it anywhere else. I know that. I've done the same thing with my stock market trading business stuff. I know I teach stuff nobody else teaches. That's why people pay me thousands and thousands of pounds in that industry to learn what I teach because I know it doesn't exist anywhere else because it's a part of the Akashic records I'm getting it from. Even that were even in that world, I used that power. That's where that's how I mastered the stock markets. That's how I mastered the financial markets with the power of the Akashic Records. And funny enough, it's Fibonacci that I specialize in. Even with trading, which is geometry. Sacred knowledge and wisdom is what I use to master the markets. Yeah, there's very few on our frequency. Very few. I mean, there's actually, the way God shows me, there's a few lights have come on. A few lights, a few thousand lights. Just to put things into perspective, in the amount of billions of people on this planet, only a few thousand lights switched on in the last two years. I mean, lights, I say everyone is, every human being has a light. 
and it's either switched on or it's not. Like you look in my eyes, you see my light is switched on. Look in other people's eyes, you will see the difference when you will know when someone's light is switched on and when it's off. You have the eyes to see, you will see. So, there's a lot of things that you need to understand about like knowledge and wisdom. Like when you learn from books, like I've got books here. Right. I wrote a book, right? The reason my book is 80 pages long. The reason my book is 80 pages long and you know, I was reading A Course in Miracles the other day and it's like 2,000 fucking pages long. I am never ever going to read 2,000 pages of that book. Because I know even if I read all 2,000 pages of The Course in Miracles, I will still not know the truth. Because it doesn't come from reading. <laughs> right? So, my book is only 80 pages long because it's a practical. It's a practical. Because it's a practical with signposts. There are fifty-four topics that I discuss. And I discuss the twelve Jungian archetypes to live by. To live in this dream consciousness to the highest potential because this is a dream <laughs> this book is like this is a dream when i say illusion like a dream is an illusion right it's temporary so the way that i understand maya the illusion or the matrix or what is the false reality here my book is called live the dream it lived the dream the link is in the bio it's on on amazon it's my book it's on my page the link is in the bio Live the Dream, it's called Live the Dream, A Guide to Enlightenment and Freedom from the Matrix by Cam Dadwa. Link is in the bio. It's only $4.99 on Kindle. I mean, if I had a chance to pay £5 to fucking learn the truth, I would. Or some of the truth at least. Now this is another book. This is a good book. Leonard Orr. Breaking the Death Habit. This is a lot about breath work and stuff. And you know. Breath being the king and queen of higher consciousness. This is a great book. Also Live Dangerously. I've got thousands of books. And I will still buy books. But. What I'm trying to get at is. You, the books like these. A lot of the books. Like. I won't read this whole book. I will never read the whole book from the page from the, I have done, but I just won't never do it again. I will never read a book ever again from the beginning to the end. My book, I do. Okay, I've read my book from beginning to the end a number of times because it's easy to read. Okay, it's nice and big text. It's for creative minds like me that do not like too much fucking nonsense. You know, creative minds don't like too much information. We just don't. This book, 134 pages, a bit more manageable, but again, I'm not going to read the whole book, okay? So what I would do is I go through the book, the topics, right? So this is how you use the power of the Akashic Records to get the most out of all the information you got outside. So you've got information out there in the illusion because the divine intelligence has placed information within the illusion so that you can remember your truth. Right? So, these books are signposts. Like when you're on a road and you're trying to find your way somewhere. And you're going off track or you want to just know where you are. And you say, okay, where is the truth? Right? What God will do will often guide you to sources of information. But you've got to be in that right state of mind. You've got to be in that flow, that universal flow. So I get in the flow 
and divine guides me like even my posts sometimes i repost posts but most of my posts are my own posts but sometimes i repost posts but i do not use social media meaning i do not consume information i am not a consumer i am a producer remember in this world you either become consumers or you become producers you become consumers of the products that are created or you create the products so that's like with physical products and also information you either produce the information or you consume the information. Yeah, Breaking the Death Habit by Leonard Orr, that book, the other one. Also, Live Dangerously, great book. I mean, these are just books randomly I just picked up off my bookshelf just to show the importance of, I'm not recommending these books or anything, but these are books that I picked up off my bookshelf to remind you that those external sources are just signposts so divine will say you might get inspiration intuition or book might keep showing up somewhere somehow in your experience in your field of vision you keep hearing about something will guide you towards it and you start reading it okay um one of the first books a lot of people have funny enough in my sort of age group have picked up um like spirituality wise and got on got on the journey. And I've got a lot of older books as well. Now, one of the main books, The Opening of the Third Eye by Dr. Douglas Baker, okay, which is that book that fell off my bookshelf three times. My dad was reading on the back, he wrote, wrote the words, the truth is high, higher still is truthful living. And because my dad died when I was seven and the book fell off my bookshelf three times when I was 15, I picked it up and I've been reading it since. And that book helped me open the third eye. But that one book, I didn't have to read 20, 30, 40, 50 books. That one book, The Divine Intelligence, made it fall off my bookshelf three times when I was a teenager. When I was 15 years old, I picked it up and said, why the fuck did this book fall off again? Then I picked it up. Then I found my dad wrote a message on the back because I never heard my dad speak. Because my dad had motor neuron disease, he couldn't speak. Okay, he was disabled from the waist down and he died when he was 32 years old. But he left a message. So through my, the divine work for my dad to gain that knowledge and wisdom and he understood it but couldn't share it because he couldn't talk. So he wrote because he could write. He wrote a message on the back of the book. Maybe knowing one day, maybe one of his children may pick it up. And what happened? I picked it up and I read it. The truth is high, higher still a truthful living, my dad wrote on the back of the book. So I have been, I became obsessed with, since I was 15 years old, I'm 44 years old now, with how do I open my third eye and what is the truth and how do I live the truth? So those are my, the, those have been my obsessions since I've been 15 years old. So that's an example of how the divine led me to external information. A book. Be careful with picking up loads of information or books because people are constantly recommending books on Instagram, social media, Facebook, whatever, because you're going to pick up loads. Okay, I fell into this trap. I've got courses I've bought that I've never finished. I've got books that I've picked up I've never read. So some of them are not meant to be. That's why. You're only going to read the ones that were meant to be. Because everything is as it's meant to be. Everything. Everything is always as it's meant to be. It never isn't. I'm starting at 41 where you're at 15. Well, I've done uh, 30 years of work for you, mate. So you can do it in three. <laughs> So, yeah, don't worry about that. I've done the 30 years work you don't need to do. You're in the right place. Okay, so, talked a lot about Akashic Records today. Hopefully it's given you um, some insights into what it isn't and what it is. And firstly, you all got access to them. No key needed. Okay, so universal flow is important. Keep getting in flow with nature. Rhythm of the universe. I talk about the Tao. 
The Taoist way is do nothing, then do everything. When I say do nothing, let go, completely let go. Like, let go, just be. I spend a good few hours a day in that mode. But because I spend two hours, three hours, probably longer actually, because I'll do probably an hour meditation in the morning. I'm always in that state of mind where I'm lowering my brainwave frequency so time slows down. So then when time slows down and I've got all that inspiration and all that wisdom, I'm 44 years old. But again, actually we're talking, keep talking about age here right now. Something that we've also learned to do, remember, like aging, like if we keep, everyone has a birthday every year, but really you don't have a birthday every year. You was only born fucking once. You do not have a birthday every year. But people record their birthday every year, so there's a concept of getting eight, there's a, there's a concept, a perception of I should be getting older because I'm counting my age. I am actually planning from next year no longer to count my birthdays, just like Prince decided to do. So I'm going to be 44 years old forever. And see how it goes. I'm going to be interested to see if I age less. So at 15 years old, I became obsessed because of that book, The Opening of the Third Eye by Dr. Douglas Baker with opening my third eye and the truth and then living the truth. So my dad left that message on the back of the book. So this is why I say you need less information, but you need to understand it better. You do not need more information. It's a bad habit, gaining more information and thinking that more knowledge and more information and learning more is the path to truth. It is not. A lot of this is unlearning and taking layers off the onion. And every time you take one layer off, like people say, find yourself. It's not really finding yourself because you are you. You do not need to find your higher self. Your higher self has not gone anywhere. Never has, never did go anywhere. It never will go anywhere. You do not need to find your higher self. You do not need to find yourself. You are you. You just need to remember who the fuck you are. And, the, and how do you remember who the fuck you are? You gotta forget the nonsense that's been fed to you. So this is a lot of unlearning. Unlearning, shedding layers, right? The metaphors, the snake shedding the skin. Old skin, shed old skin. Shed your old layers that do not serve you. You know, so this is why I, I shed layers, okay? If something has not been working for me, I take it off. I used to smoke cigarettes, were not serving me. Stop smoking. Used to drink alcohol, was not serving me. Killed my brother at the age of 43 years old, alcohol. So I stopped drinking alcohol because it does not serve me. Funnily enough, it's called spirit. Kills the spirit. Right? So we need to get rid of what is not serving us one by one. And as you develop more and more better habits, and you unlearn the bad habits, you develop more better habits, you start to remember what's right and what's wrong, naturally. Okay, but conditioning has got caught, us caught up with this. As I said, we went to school and we started to learn and believe that we need to learn from external. We have teachers, they must be the one to teach us. They teach us that we need to learn from the books. So we get conditioned to believe we need to learn from the books. This is why everyone is in this state. You do not need the teachers. You do not need the books.
Okay, that's what the school has taught us. The schools have taught us as a schooling system. Okay, now we do need teachers of this nature, you know, not teaching what we learned there, because at school they're teaching you what what they're teaching you what to think. They're not teaching you how to think. Right? So, a few people have joined us a bit later on here today. We are talking about Akashic Records and we've been demystifying the Akashic Records and we're talking a lot about the difference between knowledge and wisdom. So knowledge is gain. Uh, knowledge is learnt. Okay, knowledge is learnt. So that's learning, knowledge. You take, everything is information. So in the illusion, Maya, illusion, it's all information. So like in the Matrix movie, when Neo sees through the illusion, everything just becomes code. So we are just decoding machines. We are information perceivers and we decode the illusion. We decode the illusion. Now within the tapestry of the illusion is specks of truth. Now, if we, through intellect, try to piece it together, it's near to impossible. How often do I go live? Um, I, it depends. It's divine timing, divine, whenever the divine calls for me to do this. I do not make choices and decisions. In the, of that nature really, I do not choose. So this is what we're talking about. There's intellect and there's intelligence and they're two very different things. I have, I do not use intellect a lot. Intellect is trying to figure shit out. Intellect is planning. Intellect is okay, I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna do that and then I this means this and this means that. That's intellect. I do not work like that. Intelligence does not need intellect. Intelligence is automatic. This is automatic. Right? It's automatic. Unconscious intelligence is automatic. That's why my blood pumps through my veins without me thinking about it. That's why my heart is pumping without me asking for a heartbeat. That's why I can breathe without trying to breathe. Because it's unconscious intelligence. So unconscious intelligence is where the Akashic record is. Akashic records, as I said, there's the ninth chakra. I've discussed all 14 chakras today. If anyone's missed this live, you can catch the recording later, but I've already discussed all 14 chakras. The ninth chakra is the Akashic Records. So the Akashic Records, you're always connected to them. I'm connected to it now. So I only had inspiration today, two hours before I went live, to do a live today on Akashic Records. So how does that come about? Well, I will be probably sitting in my garden, watching the clouds more than likely, or I'll go for a walk in nature, and I will have inspiration. What is inspiration? Inspiration, in spirit. Because when I'm in spirit, I get intuition. What is intuition? I am intuition. Means I'm being taught. By who? I'm being taught by the divine. I am intuition with the divine. I'm being taught. That's the true guru. That's the eternal guru. It's the only guru that you need. That is the source and wisdom, source of all wisdom and knowledge. And the Akashic Records is a part of that. So think of it as the mind of God and you've got access to it all the time. You can dip into it whenever you want. I just get information whenever I need it. The information is always there. Like sometimes I do ask me anything lives. I just come live and I say, look, I don't really know what to talk about. Divine says, just go live and let people ask you questions. 
And how do I know the answers that to the questions people ask me? If I haven't learned the information, it's the Akashic Records, because I just download the information. So you've got to be open to receive, right? Because if you keep thinking you know it, or you keep thinking you need to learn to know, it's not going to happen. I don't think like that. I don't need to know anything. I don't need to learn. It will just come to me. It's a completely different way of being to the way people have been conditioned. So the other powerful thing about the Akashic records is past lives. Okay, so if that is the memory, so where we're looking at signposts of information, so everything here is external information, these are signposts. Now, what I, why I said is I do not read all the books is because what will happen is I will read a little bit of those books. No need to find a guru. You are your best guru. Your guru is within. Divine intelligence is the guru. There is only one enlightener. Or in Sikhism, we call it Wai Guru, the wondrous enlightener. Okay, call it what you like. God, divine, Christ. Doesn't matter what you call it. Just know it's there. It will teach you everything you need to know. So that's all. That's what I, I get my knowledge and wisdom from. So the other day I talked about mantras. Okay. Yes, I learned the mantras. I spoke about, um, you know, learning the mool mantra when i was six and then learning the gayatri mantra um om mani padme ham etc but how about the knowledge and the wisdom behind it that's from the akashic records that's where the dot connector god comes to play not you you get out the way you do not need to put the pieces of the puzzle together you just take the information in let the information sit and let god do the rest or let your higher self do the rest, okay? Let your higher self do the rest. So like here, when I open this live, I say, just take the information in. Do not turn up here and start judging information, okay? Some people will look at me and they'll be too busy looking at me, they won't listen to me, right? Do not miss the messages, listen. Listen to the messages. So, Give me a moment. Just lost connection to source there. Okay, so that's an example of when conscious thoughts come in the way. So your conscious thoughts are what get in the way. Your unconscious mind is unconscious. It doesn't need conscious thinking. Conscious thinking is intellect, right? Getting hot now. Conscious thinking is intellect. Intelligence is unconscious intelligence. That's why it can run your body without thinking. Do you need to think about heartbeats? Do you need to think about blood pumping through your body? Do you need to think about staying alive when you go to sleep? No, you fucking do not. What evidence do you need? The power is already there. What evidence do you need? The power is already there. 
So when you take the information from external sources, those signposts, if you was meant to come across that information and know more about that in this lifetime, it will connect in your mind and the knowledge will turn into wisdom. Knowledge is learnt, wisdom is gained. Knowledge is learnt, wisdom is gained. Knowledge is learnt from books. Wisdom is gained from understanding what you learnt. Does that make sense? Please understand the difference. Because these are the basics. But if you do not understand the basics, forget the rest. If you do not understand the difference between knowledge and wisdom, do you not understand the difference between conscious and unconscious? Start with the basics, please. When you are in tune with unconscious mind, because when you're dead, your unconscious mind is still there. That's eternal. That's the eternal you. It's your conscious mind that dies. Your unconscious mind and soul is eternal. But your unconscious mind and soul is eternal, but it's gonna keep manifesting itself into a new reality in this 3D Maya illusion until you get it. Until you finally understand the true essence and true nature of yourself. The lifetime that you understand your true essence and true nature of yourself, like this was my lifetime to get it. It's not the lifetime for everyone. But my past lives were very important to understand this. So during enlightenment, God showed me a lot. Why my dad died, why my brother died, why I had to learn this from that. All the stuff that was bad, what I labeled as bad, because there actually is no good and bad. Because my dad dying was an experience. My brother dying was an experience. I labeled them as bad. As human beings do, we label things. We are the labelers. The divine doesn't label shit. The divine just is. And it all is beautiful exactly as it's supposed to be. So I understand the beauty in my dad dying. I understand the beauty in my brother passing. I understand the divine connection between us three that created this trinity because they had to pass to the other side for me to get the knowledge. So as I was shown this, the Akashic Records, as I said, is not somewhere you go, it's a place of knowing. And the, of knowing everything about your life right now. You want to know why everything is happening. And Now, you're not going to know everything that's going to happen in the future. You'll have insights into it. I'd be given glimpses because that's something the Divine doesn't do. It show you the future. Because that just doesn't happen. You'll get glimpses. I know some things, but the beauty is not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. That's what makes it fun. But with that power, it's a lot more enjoyable. So the past lives and experiences, well, they come into it. My past lives experiences, I spoke about some before. Some I'm not going to reveal until later on. Because it's not divine timing, I can't. There's some past lives I love to speak about, but I'm a lot. I can't. But some past lives I have spoke about. Okay, but your past lives... The fact that you're here on this live mean it, you would have developed to a very high level of consciousness in your past lives. Because if you're interested in such topics and subjects during this lifetime, you got very, very far in your past life. Very far. You nearly made it, basically. This is the lifetime you will make it. 
most likely. Not for everyone. I don't know everyone that's here or who everyone. Most people are going to watch this live another time in the future. But whenever it happens, you'll know it's your time. You'll know it's your time. And your past lives will become flooding back. So past lives are just like, you know, this is a dream consciousness. As I said, my book, Live the Dream. This is a dream. This is just another dream I'm having. This is the character I chose in this dream. Now in this book, I talk about the 12 Jungian archetypes, right? Playing those characters. In this dream, the ruler, the creator, the sage. I'm playing the sage right now, funny enough. Innocence, explorer, rebel, outlaw, hero, the wizard, magician, jester, the everyman, which is fitting in, lover, the caregiver. These are the 12 characters I play in this dream. All in my book. I'm the sage today. I often am the sage when I'm talking on my lives. But sometimes a bit more high energy when I'm standing up, speaking, doing breath work, etc. Sometimes I come across more like a leader. Sometimes I'm gonna come across like someone's more innocent and I'll talk about pain and suffering. Sometimes I'm gonna come across and talk about fucking the system and come out, come across it like a rebel and an outlaw. Sometimes I'm gonna be in my qi gok and qi gong and manipulating energy with my hands. I'm a magician. So I am all of these things and all of you are too because they're just characters. So I'm playing a character in this dream. He has names. Cam, Cambo, whatever. It's a fucking name. You know, there's labels again. But past lives also had names, labels. But most importantly, I had memories and experiences and lessons and knowledge and wisdom like I've gained in this life. The Akashic records is where they are stored. So with everything that I've just shared in this live, in gaining access to the Akashic Records and how to get out the fucking way and remember who the fuck you are, not only remember who the fuck you are in this life, part of that process is remembering who the fuck you was in previous lives. Because that is when the true power fucking wakens up. Because what a lot of what I'm doing here in this live, live in this life right now, is I'm bringing knowledge and wisdom from past lives back into this life. My Qi Gong as a Qi Gong master in a past life. Right? Breath work. Past life there, I had a past life as an Aztec, as, a, as an Aztec. Past life as a shaman. Okay, that's why some of you guys are not me do, see me do my shaman stuff. But I'm a shaman too. Where does my shaman knowledge come from and wisdom? I haven't learned it from books. I've never read a book on fucking shamanism. Ever. In my life. So where does the shaman knowledge and wisdom come from? Well, I connect to shaman knowledge and wisdom by connecting with nature, the trees, grounding, and my ancestors. So my ancestors, my spirit guides. Qigong master. It's a past life. I got very, very high in my level of consciousness as a Qigong master. Lived a very long life, 100 years plus. Another past life. Sirius B, the star system. I often spoke about me ascending from the stars. How do I remember all of this? because I'm remembering my past lives. It's as simple as that. But all the knowledge and the wisdom that you need is actually in this life. I've already covered it earlier today. You don't need a lot of information. You just need to understand little information better. Less information, less is fucking more. Always remember that. Master the simple stuff. Master music, love, nature, breath. That's it. Forget everything else. Let the rest just come to you. Because the Akashic Record is where the true library of knowledge and wisdom is. 
and it's a part of you. Don't even need to read that book, you just get the information. And then you can write it or you can speak it. It's what I do. I write it, my book, is a product from what I downloaded from the Akashic Records. What I share on my page, knowledge and wisdom from Akashic Records. Not external sources. Gotta get out of this mindset that humanity has been conditioned into, which has limited them. Limited them into thinking that they need to learn to know. When you do not need to learn to know, you do not need to learn to know. All right, much love. Any questions, anyone? Also, also is a, yeah, I just spoke about also a little while ago, actually. Chopper. Also is one of my, one of my favorite gurus. Well, he's a good guru. Good, good man. Past lives. Hold on a few minutes if anyone's got any questions, otherwise I'm going to close it off. We've done it over an hour, 20 minutes today. This live will be recorded and it will go on the Instagram page and on the YouTube channel. Can you repeat the simple things to master? I like it when you talk about that. It makes, seems less stressful. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much for the question. So. How could I remember my past lives? Well, this is, you gotta get out of the way. I'll come to that one. Um, this video, I don't know how much of it you caught, but I was touching on that today. YouTube link is in the bio. All my links are in my in my link tree. All my links. My links to the the YouTube channel, which is quite new, so please subscribe because I haven't we haven't got many subscribers on there at the moment. Um, I'm just putting my videos from here on there at the moment. The Facebook page, the Cambo, the Mind of Matter page. 103,000 followers on there. That's been going a few years now. Uh, this Instagram page only started in June 2021. All the links are there in the bio to my book as well. So the simple things to master. Music, love, nature and breath. Music, firstly... It's important to master. Okay, uh, connect with. I, I would say connect with music, love and nature, and then you will master them. Okay, breath, connect. So to master anything, you have to connect with it. Okay, so mastery begins with connection to whatever it is you're trying to master. Not by learning more, it's by connection and doing practice. Okay, I'm a practitioner. A practitioner means you do stuff. My dad wrote on the back of that book I spoke about earlier, the truth is high, higher still is truthful living or living the truth. So you can know the truth or no truths, but if you're not living them, they're pretty useless. So you gotta live truth. Truth is not something you just know. You need to live it to embody it. So to embody a truth, you must practice. So practice music. Music is easy, just listen to music. Connect with music. Everything is sound. In the beginning, there was the word, which is a sound. Okay? And then God said, let there be light. Right? So sound creates light. 
or sound or om primordial sound om the vibration the vibration crowns sound wave frequencies which creates light so everything is sound frequencies and light so when we connect with music we remember the true nature of everything you'll actually just start to see like I do when I do qigong and when I listen to music especially when I close my eyes I see music right so to know you're mastering the realm of music you should start to see music next thing is love you got to master love by connecting with love so how do you connect with love well animals loving animals is a great way having a family is a great way having a partner and a family like i have a wife which i love very much we've been together nearly 20 years now and we have two kids so i can practice love and unconditional love because i have a family okay so family is a very big thing like um i've been brought up on very strong morals family morals and family is is everything to me like i would die for my family right and i'm i'm sure anybody would so 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 that is love so i'm not talking about love as in like falling in love with one person that is love too but you need to fall in love with everyone and everything even everyone that you don't like that's true love that's true love like loving even the haters loving everyone because you know they are you that's true love so like when i love my cat when i love my children and i love my wife and i love you everyone here i'm loving you like i'm loving myself but you can't love like that until you love yourself when i was depressed when my brother died i became suicidal You can't love someone when you're like that. Not properly. So you have to love yourself first. Then you can love others. You can't truly love anyone because if you're still hurt, you will only hurt people. So remember this. Hurt people will hurt people. So if you're still hurt, you might hurt people. instead of loving them when you have healed and you've loved yourself and you continue to love yourself until you've healed enough then you can help people like i only help people in this field i've been teaching people for over 20 years and i've been a therapist since 2005 master of neurolinguistic programming practitioner timeline timeline therapist since 2006 but I've been helping people in in all from all different walks of life but I did stop helping them when I started to struggle because I couldn't help myself so that's all fantasy like I do not try to help people when I know I need help and you need to pick up on that because I have had people which I thought were healers and they hurt me so you got to be careful so that's why I always say like for myself it's very important to make sure whenever I I'm I'm there sharing information I'm trying to help people I'm doing it when I'm in a good place because if I'm not in a good place I can't help people so you got to be in a good place and you get in a good place by loving yourself and remembering you are worthy when you master love so unconditional love unconditional love this is unconditional love like i do this for nothing really maybe get some love back that's about it cuz that's all you need with love you just need to give love and you get it back but whether it comes back or not doesn't matter because sometimes i get hate back right this is the thing you got to be willing to do like you got to try to share the message of love in a world where people ain't 
living from that mindset, it's hard. I mean, I get haters, I get people saying to me shit, but am I going to stop loving because they're still hurting? No. I can't do that. So I will keep loving even if people keep hurting me. So that's true love. Um, nature. Connect with nature. Nature is a higher vibrational environment. So if you're in this day and age, a lot of people are stuck in concrete buildings. I mean, just look at Dubai. It's all artificial. Even the beach is artificial. It's not really nature. Now the ocean is still pretty cool, right? The waves and everything. But it's artificial. Like try to find nature. Like nature means not man-made. Not buildings, not skyscrapers, not office blocks, not your house. Like outside my house is my garden. Like I've got my conservatory and I'll often do videos there, which is an outside inside space. So it's outside, but it's inside, so it's covered. But then I've got my garden and then my house is in the countryside so I can go outside and be in the countryside. You'll often see me in the stories just going for a walk in nature. I've got three horses, so I'll go and spend time with my horses. I've got a cat. I'll spend time with my cat. I love my cat. So unconditional love. Unconditional love, like when you have pets and animals, it's unconditional love because like, like my cat, first thing in the morning, he's waiting there for me inside of my bed. I've got to feed him. Okay, it's like having a child. But I'm going to feed him unconditionally. The cat isn't, cat's going to give me love. That's all. Cat's just going to give me love back. My horses are just going to love me back. That's all I'm asking for. But I'm going to give unconditionally. I want to give them food. I want to look after them. I'm going to groom them. I'm going to give them a place to stay. That's unconditional love as well, right? Nature is connecting with the animals too. This is why I stopped eating animals, okay? I'm not saying that you have to stop. I used to eat meat all the time, but my consciousness really shifted a lot because it's an etheric thing, you know? In the meat of the animal, animal, the flesh of the animal is this suffering because unfortunately a lot of animals are slaughtered and made to suffer. So it goes into their soul, it goes into the flesh and it goes into the etheric field. So I try not to consume the, the, the suffering of animals into my body. So these things help. Connect with nature. Connect with nature. Higher vibrational environment, like trees are alive. Grass is alive. It's living. Plants, flowers, they're alive. You're alive. So if you're alive and you want to feel alive, it's common sense. Be surrounded by living things. Be surrounded by life. This wall behind me is not alive. It's a solid fucking material object. It's not vibrating at a higher level. It's not gonna help my higher consciousness. So vibrational environment. Because you become a product of your environment. Always remember that. Just being stuck indoors in a building and not getting outdoors enough and being around nature enough, like going to the lake or going to the beaches. I love to go to the beach, watch the ocean, watch the waves. Because that's a meditation. So I done a story today, this afternoon, go for a walk. I listen to the, the wind rustling through the trees and listen to the birds. Listening to that is meditation. Ancient wisdom taught us meditation is much more about observation and listening. But meditation has become something completely fucking different with all the misinformation in this new age world. But in India, in ancient wisdom, it was just listen and observe, witness and observe. That's it. That's what meditation is. So you can actually do it anywhere. You can live in meditation. So that's what I do. I live in meditation. But you, it's a lot easier to do when you're surrounded by nature. So surround yourself by nature, with nature. Connect your feet. Yes, like earthing is very important as well. We are electrical beings, right? Electrical beings. 
all electrical things have a negative and a positive charge. Left hand, right hand, positive negative charge. In the, in the hands, when I do my Qigong, I create an electric charge and I feel Qi energy because it's an electrical charge and there's a vortex of energy. Now, you probably can't see that, but there's a vortex of energy in between my thumb and my finger there. Okay, you do this, there will be a vortex of energy in the middle, a spinning vortex of energy. With the open third eye, you can see it. I can see it very clearly. You might not be able to. You can see my logo fits in there nicely, funny enough. Um, so, it's all there. Just connect with it. It's all there. Love is there. Music and rhythm and the flow of nature is there. Connect with it. Music, love, nature, and breath. Now, breath is an important one to connect with because it's an unconscious thing. It's happening like now. I'm, I haven't taken any conscious breath. But one of my things is camo breath work, right? Four step framework, 10 to 20 full exhalations out, 10 to 20 full inhalations in, then breath retention for as long as possible, and then rhythmic breaths. That's the camo breath work framework. The camo breath work framework is consciously taking control of something that is normally unconscious. So when you practice taking control of the unconscious, you regain control of what is normally unconscious. So it's mastery of the unconscious mind, breath control. So those are the basics. So, you know, really those four things, it's all you ever need to focus on. Right, good, no more questions. How do I remember my past lives? Well, as I've said, every life is like a dream. Okay, this is a dream I'm having now. So every past life I have had was a dream. Just like this one, this is a dream consciousness. That's why my book is called Live the Dream because this is a dream, it's temporary. A dream is a temporary and an illusion, right? When you're asleep at night, what happens? And you have a dream. You haven't gone anywhere. Yet the whole world appears from nowhere. And in that world, you're breathing, you're talking, you're interacting with people, you're going places, but you're asleep on your bed. In the same way, we are here right now, we can regain access to those dreams. Now, they're not dreams you had at night time. They were physical incarnations, physical incarnations. So you will remember things very vividly when you start to see the insights, very vividly, okay? But most importantly, inspiration, intuition, things will come for you that you you would think, how the fuck do I know that? Like it happens to me all the time. Like with my Qigong stuff, whilst I've, I've done karate when I was seven, boxing when I was 11, Wing Chun Kung Fu when I was 14, Krav Maga more recently and mixed martial arts. But I learned Qigong, but I learned a very basic Qigong. Spring Forest Qigong. Master Chun Li Yin. Right? And I've I've... I've shared stuff and it's actually Spring Forest Qigong two level course that I bought like 16, 17 years ago. I did that, it's very basic, it's about three energy centers and not seven, not the full seven chakra centers. And it was just feeling yin yang, breathing in the energy of the universe. There was a secret past phrase for accessing, accessing the universe. It was just, I am in the universe and, and the universe is in me. So it's very, very basic Qigong. So I've done a few basic Qigong courses. Yet I became a Qigong master. A lot of that is down to practice, but knowledge and wisdom started to flow to me from somewhere which I never knew where it was coming from. Like I knew stuff and I was doing stuff in my Qigong that I knew had to come from somewhere else. I just never knew where it was coming from. It was only later, like last year, when I went into enlightenment, I figured out I actually had a past life as a Qigong master. 
Okay? But before that, I just thought, where the hell is it coming from? So you will get glimpses initially by getting insights into information of things you think, like, how the fuck did I know this? I didn't learn this from anyone, but I just know it and I know it really well. So shit like that will happen. Because, and the more you connect with it, the more you will remember. So in this incarnation, I'm born into Sikhism and I learned a lot about Sikhism. Okay, but there have been past incarnations where I learned and I was a Christian. Past incarnations where I was a Hindu and I focused more on that particular commitment to or a path because they're all different paths to the same thing all different paths to the same source so having different lives and different experiences on different paths to the same source is very insightful very very insightful indeed So your past lives or enlightenment is the true way to gain insights into it because that's when God takes over your mind and your body. Because you have a limited mind, which is the mind that we, we think we are or we think is our mind. But when we get beyond that mind, when we keep doing the mantras like I'm not the mind, I'm not the body, I'm not the mind, I'm not the body, and I've done the whole mantras live two days ago right why good or similar okay getting out of the mind we've got to replace our thoughts not only conscious thoughts but unconscious thoughts with the mantras so that the sound frequencies the divine sound frequencies overtake those tones and frequencies overtake all the noise so the noise needs to go when the noise goes the mantras are the most powerful way to get rid of the noise because that noise replaces that noise. Okay, it's easier to replace noise with noise rather than have no noise. So mantra is just replacing the nonsense with. So I didn't. I did uh, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Mani Padme Hum, Gayatri Mantra, Om Bhurvo Svaha Tat Savitur Varinyam Bargo Devasya Dimahi Deo Yona Prochodayat. Right, so these mantras, I've done a whole two hour live on it two days ago, so I'm not going to do that again. But the mantras will help you get out the way and get your thoughts shut off because those thoughts are the ones that get in the way. What you think you know and what you keep thinking. When you keep thinking, you keep getting in the way. And it's difficult to stop thinking, so what you do is you use mantras, the power of mantras and sound and music technologies. Because everything is sound. That's why we hear our thoughts. You hear your thoughts. So we have to engage the throat chakra, as I said in the mantras video two days ago. So when we do a mantra like Om Burvusvaha Tat Savitur Varinyam Bargo Deva Siya De Mahi Deo Yona Prochodayat I'm engaging my throat chakra when I say it out loud, but I can also say it internally. Om Burvus Vaha. That's a, I can say it internally, so. But I want to engage the throat chakra. It needs to be engaged in the throat chakra because when you have internal conversation, internal dialogue that creates the noise, your throat chakra actually gets engaged. That's what creates the sound. So even if it's internal, because remember, you don't only see out here and hear out here, you hit also, and you don't only feel out here, you feel inside, you hear inside, you see inside. That's the programming language of the mind that you need to regain control of. So those sounds then become vibrations and those frequencies, well, those vibrations become frequencies. And those frequencies become the overtained tones of your, your nature, your state of being. 
So the easiest way to get out of the way is repeat mantras so that you do not hear the noise that keeps getting in the way. Because you can't, you can't consciously think about your past lives. It's impossible. You need to be connected to unconscious intelligence. Remember, unconscious intelligence is the intelligence that you're born with, keeps you alive at night. That's what keeps, that's what creates the dreams at night time. Right? That's unconscious intelligence. You do not consciously create a dream world. You do not consciously create a dream world. You do not get your pen and paper and say, let me create a dream tonight and this is gonna go here and this is gonna go here. This is what I've been talking about. You do not need intellect. Intelligence and intellect are two completely different things. Intelligence is automatic and you need to remember it is automatic and you have the power to allow for that intelligence to unfold, unf unfold automatically and for it to teach you automatically, just like it's keeping you breathing automatically, just like it's pumping your blood through your veins automatically, just keep like it's giving you heartbeat automatically, just like it's doing everything else automatically. You do not make a business plan to wake up alive in the morning. You do not, because you do not need to. Just like you do not need to make a business plan to find out about your past lives. The only thing that's getting in the way is you thinking you do not remember and you believing you do not remember and all the conditioning that's took place up until your life right now, which has taken you away from it. That's why I've been talking about today. It's all about unlearning, unlearning, take the layers off, take the layers off. You do not need to find yourself because you are who you are. You just need to remember yourself by forgetting who you are not. This is a more forgetting process. Forgetting consciously who you think you are and remembering who you are unconsciously. Get it? Because that's where your past lives are there, man. They're not going to be the same as mine, but they are there. Hopefully that answers your question. All right, thank you very much. What are your thoughts and explanations on being aware of aroma smells when dreaming? Well, you do have aromas and smells when dreaming. Very rare to remember them. I mean, um, it's very rare for people to remember their dreams at all at night time. Remember when you are awakened consciously, like I said, since enlightenment, I do not dream at night because dreams will stop at night because the only dream you will have is this one that you're alive in now. But also after enlightenment, you won't sleep a lot. I, I will often only sleep three or four hours a night. That's all I need. You do not need any more than that. It's again, the conditioning. People have been made to believe they need things that they do not need. You do not need seven or eight hours sleep a night. You do not need to eat that many times a day. You do not need a lot of the bullshit they've been taught. This is all stuff that's been taught to you. And what you've been taught is not always true. Remember, this is about forgetting what we thought was true. And remembering what is true by, this is why I'm a biohacker. I find out what's true by using my body, my vessel as the experiment. It's the best way to know the truth, isn't it? You learn it yourself. Use yourself as the experiment. Right? That's that's how it's all possible. You've got to become the experiment. You've got to become the practitioner. It only comes through doing. Not by reading and learning. I said knowledge is learnt. Wisdom is gained. Just like muscle is gained through practice. Just like experience is gained through practice. Wisdom is gained. I've experienced it too, uh, now twice. First time was the distinct smell of person's aftershave, deceased family member. Second life was dreaming of flowers. Um, there is scents and smells. Scents and smells, like the scents and smells in the physical world, like we have five senses, right? We see, we hear, we taste, we smell, we feel. Now, the strongest ones are what we see, what we hear, what we feel. 
but what we smell and taste are very subtle. So firstly, I'd say you're probably very intuitively connected with yourself. The fact that you pick up on s smells and uh, aromas. I do myself too, so it's interesting. Um, because smells and taste is something that people do not pick up on generally. Because they are very subtle in terms of like the other, the other senses, the visuals, auditory, what you hear, what you see and what you feel is usually a lot stronger. So if you do, smells are very, very, like this is why I'm burning white sage because smell is, is important. So it's a, I'm glad you brought it up. So aromatherapy is very, very powerful. And actually aromatherapy is something that will heighten the senses. So when we talk about an open third eye, it's not just seeing, we're heightening all senses. So the open third eye is seeing more clearly, hearing more clearly, feeling more clearly, smelling and tasting more clearly, right? Now taste changes anyway, like taste changes anyway after enlightenment and taste changes when you do breath work and taste changes when you meditate. Like most ascended masters and ancient, a lot of ancient wisdom has taught and explained that changes, perceptional changes take place in scent and in taste when you, when you ascend to higher consciousness. And it does, because you there's a sweet taste, talks about it in the Guru Granth Sahib. There's a sweet taste, the sweet nectar of the divine that you can taste. Um, so like when God, the divine touches my heart, a lot of the time I'll flood in tears. But I will flood in tears and it will be a taste. It will be a taste in my mouth. And there's always a smell with that taste. The taste and smell is usually connected, like the nose and the mouth is connected. Most of you probably know that, right? The nose and the mouth is connected. Like when you eat something, you like, if you don't smell the food, it's not gonna taste the same. So remember, taste and smell is connected, right? Taste and smell is always connected. So our taste, if we took the smell away, what we taste will not taste the same. So taste and smell always work together. This is an example of Akashic Records at play because I do not know, I didn't know I knew this. Okay, so thanks for the question. So well, that's why I watch my lives back because I don't know what I say. <laughs> so I watch them back and I say, well, what the fuck was I talking about for two hours? Let me go back and listen. So in the dreams, you can also smell and taste. So when we like, when we think about a past memory, we can often remember what we saw, what was happening. We can see the movie play, or we can see images at least, glimpses, pictures from that past experience or movies little movie clips we can hear sounds we can feel what we was feeling back then we can even often hear what we were saying to ourselves okay i do this with timeline therapy that's why i'm closing my eyes to remember right but often with past memories you will also associate tastes and smells right i mean how many of you sometimes smell something and you remember the past experience because it will remind you of something. So like I, there's a certain smell of plastic that reminds me of like the old Sony Walkmans because I love music. And I remember one of my first Sony Walkmans was this big bright yellow Sony Walkman. Don't know if you remember them, <laughs> but it had a really distinctive plastic smell. And every time I smell certain plastic, it reminds me of that instantly that yellow Sony Walkman image pops up in my mind. So it is a programming language. It's a part of the programming language that we use to make sense of the world around us and the world within us. Mm. 
right? So in a dream, it's the same thing. In a dream, of course, when you're really vivid in a dream, I, I have practiced vivid, lucid dreaming. Okay, this is nothing but a dream. When we're in this life, this is just a temporary dream. That's why it's temporary, just like a dream. The only reason it seems more real is because everyone's having the same dream. That's all, but it is still a dream. But everyone's having the same one. Well, at least their version of the same one. But your world is your world. You gotta remember, like my world is my world. Like everyone has their own world and then there's a world there. Like in terms of dream consciousness, it's better to look at it as like, there's your world and then there's another world, which is not really your world. That's the way I look at it. I have much more control that way. Because I can always control my world, but I don't have to control the world out there. So when you have a dream at night time, uh, you can become more vivid in the dream at night. The way you become more vivid in dreams at night is you can try specific techniques like meditation enhances your awareness so you become more conscious of the unconscious, right? Conscious breath work. So when you do exercises like conscious breath work, uh, deep meditation and you remain a week hover hovering between waking, sleeping, dreaming st states, right? You get above the waking, sleeping, dreaming state. And I've done, often done videos before where I say, look, I feel like I'm above the waking, sleeping, dreaming state. That's no longer the state I'm in. I'm not asleep. I'm not awake. I'm not alive. I'm not any of those. I'm somewhere else. So it's a state of being. It's a state of awareness to be beyond the sleeping, waking, dreaming state. So that's why I no longer dream at night because dreams will not come because now what happens instead at night for me and more than likely for anyone else after enlightenment is you're just going to have consciousness and that consciousness is really weird like for me it seems like I don't go to sleep My body goes to sleep, but I do not. I watch myself sleeping. So that's why it only takes three or four hours for my body to rest and I'm up again. Um, you can't watch yourself sleep for longer than that, really. It gets quite boring. You do not need what everyone's been falsely conditioned to believe in terms of sleep. I think it makes you more asleep, if anything. Now rest, rest, I rest a lot. Spend a lot of time in deep meditation, but it's different to sleep. When you've woken up in this life, you don't need to sleep so much. It's when you're asleep in this world, you feel like sleeping more. That's why depression does that to you. Because when you're depressed, you just want to sleep all the time. All right. We have done two hours. I'm going to call it done there today, guys. Thank you very much. The divine has finished. I've been given the signal to close down the live. Thank you very much for joining in. Much love.